as somebody who hasn't done MMA, I can imagine though, going to MMA and coming back, you feel so much more confident. Yeah, because like the win or lose is, 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 is a change the, the, the say change the feeling or change the, you know, the way that you see winning. Because before when I was like fully jujitsu, I can't lose. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta make it. I can't lose. You know, it's like that pressure that people put behind you. I was like, I can't lose, but now I was like, no, I gotta have fun. Now my things when I go to competitions, like, man, I wanna play that game. I just wanna do that. I just wanna have fun doing that game. You know, like it's, it changed for me. I don't think I have nothing to prove anymore competition-wise. So I go for the fun, right. you know. And to motivate my students too, they're like, every time I say I'm gonna compete, they got all excited. How are we gonna do it too? So I think it's too much motivating them. I think it's good too, and I like enjoy. Let's talk about your jiu-jitsu for a moment. Was there ever a moment where something just clicked, where you had a big epiphany or a big realization that totally changed your game? It's, it's a really interesting this question, because if, if we came last week, I did something, uh, something fun here. I, uh, on Monday, I show up as a white belt. And the whole week was like white, Tuesday blue, Wednesday purple, brown and black. The reason I did that is because I want to review the history about my belts, my, my timing. And uh, people was like, what are you doing on white belt? And then my students like, was like, don't worry. And then I, every time I finish class, I talk like, okay, this belt is how I start. I didn't know much about jiu-jitsu. I never knew that I was going to end up being a black belt. It was like, everything was like, I discovered and think every day, getting frustrated every day. And it seems like things don't connect it. And, but, you know, I made it to and I roll with everybody, like, smashing everybody. How come my white belt smashing everybody? <laughs> just for fun. And then on Tuesday, I came a blue belt. It's like, this belt, I knew a little bit, but I was still confused. I'm like, there's a lot of stuff that going through my mind. I was still on the Army, and there was a lot of work to do. I was working hard and tried to pull through jiu-jitsu because I fell in love with. And on that Wednesday, it was my purple. I was like, man, that's the... My most special belt is my purple belt. I spent three and a half years on a purple belt. And that's when it changes everything. When I came from my first Pan America, was, I was a purple belt, 1996. And that's when I changed completely, 100%. I was getting out of the army and I started doing jiu-jitsu. But I was still like, you know, not, not fully committed because I was, I had some other stuff going on in life too. Then I told myself, I, I, had a, I, I remember I had one training session that I went to a competition in Rio and I ended up winning. It was like a Sao Paulo Rio challenge, but I ended up winning. And when I came back to my gym, a lot of people that didn't make it, they didn't go to the competition. Oh, so you won in there, right? And then we had the Saturday like open mat. And I got smashed by everybody. Like everybody like, taking turn on me and I'm just stepping out and like can smash. And I was kind of like, I got upset a little bit. I was like, okay, I have two, two options here. Either I do this the proper way, the way that should be done, or I quit. But I can quit because I don't know if I'm able to. So I got to try it first. And then since that day, I changed my diet. I changed the way I train. I talked to a personal trainer that was my fan. I started doing conditioning training. Started doing everything the proper way. I didn't have a car at the time, and I remember my backpack was like 40 pounds. Three geese, paperware with the food, and my mom helps me. And I was like, train and teach all day, and leave at the house 7 a.m., come back home midnight. And I start doing it, and doing it. And I see the progress. Hmm. And I see the progress. I see like the same people that beat me up at my gym, it was suffering, you know? It's, and I was like, okay, that's proof of point. If you work hard and if you do things right, you can succeed. So it was <coughs> diet and conditioning were the main changes you made? Diet, conditioning, proper way to train. Like before I was training like mostly like, it's like just rolling to for row and then see what's going on. And then at the time I was like, I gotta make everything better. Everything gotta get better. My passes gotta get better. My sweeps gotta get better. And then I start like, okay, for example, I passed a guard one way and I was like, that was lucky or, or I did pass? I'll go back in there without telling you. I'll go back in there. Let's see if it works again. And I did it again. Okay, one more time to make sure. Again, now I'm gonna test on a higher belt. 
okay, it's work. Okay, this is sharp. I'm get something else and something else and something else. And I started doing this and my game started getting sharp. And I was doing conditioning, training, swimming, doing other things. And at the point that I got to a point that I was like, okay, 10 minutes, give me 10 minutes. And I was getting to a brown belt. It's like, give me 10 minutes. And the first five minutes, I was going head to head with my opponent, just like putting volume, moving, 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 moving. And someone called, okay, five minutes. Okay, now it's the time to tap. I just like submission after submission, submission after submission. And then that's when I started sharpening up my game and understanding better jiu-jitsu. Like, okay, if you work this way, if you put a pressure, if you do other things that competition gives to you, I think I start like getting more at that time, like end off the purple belt going to the brown belt mm -hmm. and i'll even tell them like on a purple belt i did some some competition as a brown belt but i was still a purple belt at the gym mm -hmm. but like there's nothing to do at the purple belt anymore and my first like, hey, you're going to brown right but he just promote, promote me like in, on the end of the year or something like that very cool but yeah but the purple belt was wasn't my life in change right. i don't want to start seeing jiu-jitsu differently what would you say is your most common advice that you're giving students? What, what would, what's, what's the words that you say the most to people? Uh, despite two jiu-jitsu, right? Like yeah. learning and stuff. What mistakes are they most often making? Uh, I, I tell them like, one thing that I don't allow on my mat is the cursing. Mm -hmm. Like people you know F bombs and stuff like that. I tell them like, no cursing. If you curse, you do push-ups. And I was like, you're like, how are you gonna punish them? I was like, mm, the reason's not there. The way that I see it, it's like the crucial moment that you should be paying attention to what's going on. You close your eyes and you just say a name, a bad name, mm. right? And that's why I always tell them like, the moment of frustration is it's bad because like, for example, you're sweeping me, right? So you have a grip, you have two grips, two good ones, and I'm falling. And I was like, and I didn't even pay attention to what was going on. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, take that crucial moment that you might not have it again. You might not have the opportunity again. When they're sweeping you, look at, okay, so he's holding my ankle and he's holding my collar. That's not gonna happen again. And take the fall, mm -hmm. take the fall down, no ego. Get it, just don't let it happen again because you was able to see it, capitalize what was going on. So frustration is part of the game. If you use it in a good way, if you be frustrated just by being frustrated, right? Uh, it's too loud. We good? Yeah, too loud. I'm telling you, shut up. <laughs> so, uh, if if you take that moment and like close your eyes and get frustrated because you got swept and because you're that tapped out, you just like you know people that just like right. tap it out and walk. I was like, so what? And I asked them, what happened? Oh, he got my arm. Well, how? Mm. How did you get your arm? Did you took the moment to realize what you did a mistake or he, what he did good? that puts you in that situation. Now you did it because you got frustrated. So frustration is not helping you. Frustration is not helping you here. So I, that's the most I, t I deal with them is like, you should be happy here in the mat because you're doing something. You're here because you want to be here because you enjoy the art. It, it's going to take a while for you to be able to be laughing and have fun on the mat. Mm -hmm. But until past that point, you should be like aware of everything that happens. It's going to help. It's a journey. The journey is gonna help you to succeed. One day you're gonna look back, that sweep, that submission that got you, is gonna make the difference between not get swept, not get tapped out so much. Right. You know, so the frustration is the main thing, like an ego. Ego and frustration walk side by side, right. the way I see it. And you're, you're teaching the students to make their losses into learning experiences. Exactly, that's, that's the most important thing. And it's, it's, a, it's like everybody says that, right? Like, but when you win, seems like everything work perfect. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, I never took that way. It's funny, but I never took that way for myself. You know, some people win, they win and they're like, oh, I won it, there's no, you know, I just won and don't think about it, right? Because you won, it was a, and your mind is like, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. I win, it was, there's nothing to fix it. But, and then I tell people here like, okay, you won, right? So look at your mat, match again. See if there's anything that you could have done better. Right? And they like, okay, I will look. And I was like, I give you one more thing. If there's something that you could not done better on that match, if you fight against yourself, how would you beat yourself? Mm -hmm. If it was you fighting against you, how would you beat yourself? And I asked them, I was like, oh, that's a good way to think. And then that's, that's how I did in Jiu Jitsu, that's how I did in MMA. And even when I'm rolling, I was like, 
man, there was an open here. This guy didn't see it. Mm-hmm. So I got to fix that. So, so it's always like I put that way. If you lose it, you didn't lose. You learn, right? Like everybody says that, but it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you lose a match, you got a lot of lessons to do in that. A lot of stuff that you can fix it, mistakes that you did. Because when you, when you lose it, you, you, you're frustrated, right? You're frustrated, you're sad. Like, Man, I lost it. Sometimes I take this way. But sometimes there's losses that you did everything you could. Mm-hmm. You think everything was almost perfect. But your opponent was way better. Right. And that happens, right. right? There was matches that were like, man, this guy got answer for everything. <laughs> man, he's good. So it's okay. Right. You right? just got to make it sharp and make it better. Because the guy, your opponent is going to be good too. He's not the only one. Right. You're not the only one that trained, that spent time at the gym. So and I tell him, like, you lose, right? How did you lose? Mistake, most of mistake, nervous. Uh, your opponent was way better than you. He, you know, had a lot of more technique than you have. All those things you guys say. And sometimes you, you train, you try hard. You should be proud of yourself for trying, but you're still gonna make it better. Absolutely. Jiva, thank you for sharing your right. wisdom. Thank you. Now you mind sharing a couple techniques? Yeah. All sure. right. Hey guys, welcome back to This Week in BJJ. I'm Budo Jake, joined by my friend Jiva Santana. Thank you so much for being part of the show. You're welcome. So I have heard rumors of a guard called the De La Jiva guard. What is this all about? It's the half guard that I adapt some stuff and make some variations. It's most of my friend called De La Jiva. You know, like, hey, you're going to teach you the, the, the secrets of De La Jiva. It's like, well, it's so simple that... They were like, oh, that's it. I was like, yeah, it is. And then I see a lot of people hit the first sweep, the half guard sweep. I see that happening a lot. But they, I just never see what I do after the first sweep. Mm. And then that's when I start like adding stuff into it. How many main moves do you have from it? Uh, from there, well, at first, at first I start doing it to regain the underhook. Like people on the hook, because like before, like half guard was a good place to be, 90s, you know, like high and under, but then people start like getting the underhook, which in Brazil call like, it's grandma, it's grandma. And then they start getting the, the underhook and then start killing the half guard. And then I start doing the first uh, bump just to regain the, the underhook. And I feel like if I twist a little bit more, I could get the sweep. And then from this sweep, I start like adding stuff and then that's how I got it. The sequence. Okay. If you want to see, I'll show you. Yeah, maybe first let's back up and show what we're talking about at the underhook and how that messes up your half guard game. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, if you get on the half guard, right? Like, uh, small people fight against big, peop- uh, big people. People like, oh, put on the half guard and then get on the deep half, find yourself under here. Then you're going to be rocking, rocking until you get a sweep. And it's hard for a big person control when the people hide under, right? Like, so, you know, like hard to be on that situation. And then one answer, the first answer that people find for this, when the people get in under, get in the underhook here, and then stuck the people down here, put them flat on their back. And once they get this underhook here, the bottom person start getting in trouble, right? And then I start doing this, like, okay, he got the underhook, and I block the hip here the, the way that I can touch my knee, am I able to get it being on a half here? And I start doing just a little twitch, forcing you to put this hand on the floor, so don't, then I don't get down the hook. I start doing this, like, just to create that space to get down the hook. But people start getting tired, like, on the thing getting too tight, he was like, man, I cannot do this anymore. Then I start, like, moving my hip to the side, just get this shoulder on the floor, and then your natural reactions is driving to me. Then that's when I step on the floor, trap this arm here, roll it, so I can get in half on top. That was the first uh, half guard sweep that I start doing it. So I get from here, the guy gets the half, he's mashing me down. From here, I got no, no leverage. So I start like, turn on my side a little bit, right? And you see when I roll now, your hand's gonna stuck under my body. See the hand stuck in here with my elbow? Then I step on the floor and I raise the hip and I roll. I got it right here, the half guard too. You wanna try? Sure. Okay. So you got on the half, mm-hmm. then I get on the hook, and I put you down here. So now right? I'm flattened down. Yeah, flattened down. Yeah. And you just yeah. turn on your side, and you push. It's natural that I'm gonna, like, okay, I'm gonna drive. Yes. There you go. It's the one thing you gotta do a little, it's, you know, like my hip is gonna get heavy, right? Mm-hmm. So you gotta raise your hip. On your bump, you raise your hip and roll. Okay. To the side, right? Here, 
see it here when I drive. Oh, there you go. That lift. That lift what takes my balance away. Okay. All right. So that's your, your first go-to move. That was the first one that, you know, simple. Especially when they drive hard, they like <coughs> forcing you back, you get the momentum. Oh man, you right. go and you go. Right? That's I was being successful with this. But then they start stepping around, right? That's when I came up with the solution for that. So it was going here, right? And then when I was moving, when I bump, they step around. See how my leg is free in there? Mm -hmm. That's when I start hooking here. That's what they start calling. Oh, geez, oh, whatever. This hook, right? Yeah, this hook. And there, here, there's still variation. Sometimes the top guy is gonna try to come back where he was before. Then you contact this arm, control the leg, then you're gonna put him down here. Mm -hmm. Straight to the mouth. All right, that's one way to do it. You wanna try that one? Sure. So you're here. So when you bump, boom, I step. See, when I step in that, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. See, when you catch it here, and then sometimes I'm gonna step and when I try to go back, when I try to go back, see, I can't step. Mm -hmm. See, you right here. Wow, it's really slick. All right, you wanna try one more time? Sure. Okay, here, so you push, when I step, boom, you catch it, see? And if I try to go back, boom, there you go. Straight to the mouth. Mm -hmm. It's really awkward for me. He really uncomfortable for the top person right. at the moment, right? But then if they don't come back because they can't, because your hook got too strong there, then you're gonna do a switch on a second hook. Okay. All right? So let's see. So you got from here, the beginning is always the same, right? So turn, you gotta drive, you push, they step, you catch it here, right? But they're not going back and you're stuck in here. Mm -hmm. So now you no longer need this, right? So you take from here, you put it here. Now you have a nice control here, this arm and this arm, and you put him wherever you want. And you come up. You can come up on the drag if you want, mm -hmm. or you can come up here on the side control. Really nice. One more time. Mm -hmm. so here, push, bump, boom. Um, right. That's really try. <clears throat> Step. No, this. And there you go. Come on, keep it tight. Yes, yes, yes. Let's try again. Here. Oh. Okay, let's let's get the beginning. Uh -huh. Here. Right? See, I'm tight too, right? right? Move your hip up. Yes, right there. Right now when I drive, boom, now you catch it. See you catching there? Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, you get the arm trap. The arm trap Something. right there. You're good. Knee under the armpit, right? So, there you go. Wow, that's an amazing sequence. We got one more. Okay. If you want to. Absolutely. Should we show everybody else or should I just keep it a secret for myself? Oh, you guys want to see it? Okay, we'll, we'll show it. Okay, so we can start from the same point. Here, right? So sometimes you're trapped here. Then I move the hip. Then my shoulder gets up. See? Now when you drive, bump, you step, and I get right here, right? Once I get here, sometimes you try to come back. That's when I get down the hook. Okay, so here, I push on the hook, right? Now I kick you towards my head. Boom, I'm right here. I have one hook in already. Mm -hmm. Secure that seat belt. Get the second hook in. And stay tight. Nice. Try that. Mm -hmm. One step. You're right there, right? And I try back up here. Under the wood. Okay, yeah, it's that way. There you go. Sit back. Mm -hmm. Take the back. One more time. Okay. Step to don't fall. Right there. Yes. No. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. A little too high. What happened in there? Kicked you up a little too high. You you flat out on your back. Stay sideways. Stay sideways. One more time. One more step. Right there. Right here. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. <clears throat> wow. It's a really cool sequence. Yeah. I like that. Been doing like. For me, that, that first bump, mm -hmm. it's so natural now. 
I bump just to get the underhook. Sometimes I just don't wanna, I don't wanna do the whole thing. I just do the first bump and get, bump and get the underhook. I start working my way to the back. Simple thing that I showed on class this, uh, this afternoon. Awesome. That was pretty cool. Thank, Thank you so much enjoyed. for sharing. Thank you. If people wanna find out more about you, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me like Jiva Santana, uh, Facebook, uh, email, Jiva Santana, hotmail.com. My website's building, he's rebuilding right now, so jivasantana.com, but I'm still like in reconstruction, so it's out of for right now. Okay, but and the gym website? The gym website, timoyammmma.com. It's right here in Irvine. If you guys want to know more about us, come here and see how we work here. It will be a pleasure to have you guys come in here. Awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. And thank you guys for watching this week in BJJ. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the interview and the techniques as much as I did. Uh, I thought those were some really special techniques and ones that I plan to drill a lot in the academy. I just want to remind you guys that you know it takes a lot of uh, work for us to produce these shows and uh, we want to keep producing them for free for you guys. Uh, all I ask for now is that you guys just smash that like button. You know, just go, go down there right now. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button and, uh, and subscribe. If you're watching on iTunes, if you could write a review for us, that would be awesome. Uh, all those likes and reviews, all they do is they help the show get more visibility. So if you like the show, um, you know, let's spread it. Let's let more people discover it. So I'd appreciate that if you could help us out with that. Next week, we have Marcelo Splinter on the show. If you are a longtime watcher of This Week in BJJ, you might remember I had Gustavo Dantas on a few months ago, and we talked about his final match at the 2014 Masters World Championships. That's when uh, he fought Marcelo Splinter. Marcelo had a really great game plan. He has really high-level jiu-jitsu. Uh, he's a guy that I really enjoy training with from time to time when he comes up to visit me at Gracie Baja in Irvine. Um, so I think you're going to enjoy the interview, and he has a couple really slick techniques. He shows how to counter the De La Hiva guard with a calf slicer, and also his way of escaping from the leg drag. So really cool techniques. Check that out next week on, again, on This Week in BJJ.